Calvary. So that's a good thing. Uh, then the apostle John pleaded this. He said, little children love one another. While Paul calls to us for us to be of the same mind toward one another, uh, maintaining, he says, the same love united in spirit and intent on one purpose and one person, but living in unity, living in unity in his short outburst of praise, uh, we discover King David. King David rejoicing and singing in his heart by faith with thanksgiving, never mind, uh, that we might also continue to give him thanks. How good, he said, how good and pleasant it is when we, uh, uh, when, when, when we live together in harmony or in unity. I don't know about you, but I feel good about being able to say that I believe we are a unified people. I believe we are together. We are in this thing together and we are praying and stirring up the gift in each other and we are encouraging one another. I think that is a good thing. When we uh, live in unity, we know that we are praying for one another and we are stirring up the gift. Uh, these days, we hear a lot said about unity. Usually, it's in the context of racial or gender discussions. Uh, but unity is an important topic. Indeed, it's an important topic. And the Bible says that if a house is divided against itself, it cannot stand. A house divided against itself, it cannot stand. The leaders of the nation of Israel had their uh, unity issues as well. Uh, keeping all 12 tribes in unity was no simple task, I'm sure, as the scripture indicates. Each tribe had an agenda. Each tribe was motivated by their own interests. After extensive research, I noted that several commentaries uh, stated as for the Jew, as for the Jewish people in ancient times, the high priest was the was of the temple. The high place, rather, was the temple in the city of Jerusalem. Uh, one that literally goes up to Jerusalem. The city crowns the hill. Its temple stood on a mount. In this exalted place, the highest act was to worship God. That was the highest place. The people would sing Psalms 133, express their joy in coming together for worship at the temple where God promised to meet them. And we are in the temple this morning and God has promised to meet us in the temple. This Psalms imparts blessings and life to God's people and it proclaims oneness in faith. Throughout Psalms 133, we find woven uh, in this message the theme of abundance and unity. Uh, after, after the temple in Jerusalem, as the temple in Jerusalem was the high place in the Jewish people, so Easter was known as the high point of the gospel. Uh, from here, the gospel spreads around the world. Jesus is risen from the tomb, and he raises us up from uh, unbelief uh, to faith, uh, from death to everlasting life. However, the, fra the, the phrase precious oil that's uh, noted in this Psalms stood out to me as I read these verses. As I thought about this, uh, these words gave new meaning uh, uh, to the importance of unity. The oil described uh, is not an ordinary oil. It is the oil prepared uh, specifically for anointing. Uh, this oil was a sweet smelling fragrance and it was costly. This was an important ritual in those days. 
uh, the high priest Aaron's beard is mentioned. He was a high priest who would be anointed, who would be anointed before entering the Holy of Holies near the resting place of God himself. So we are living in unity this morning. Uh, so how, how good it is to live in unity. It's like a sweet, a sweet, a sweet smelling fragrance. Uh, it's valuable and it has worth. Friends, it's important to live in unity if we uh, live, if we are to live in the presence of a holy God. Uh, I know, I know unity sounds like a boring impossible subject, especially with everything that's going on in our society today. Uh, you probably sitting there in your space and you are trying to figure out where is the unity? But I tell you right now, the unity is right here. The unity is on this Zoom. The unity expressed is in your heart, it's in your mind, it's in your very spirit. The unity has brought us together on this Zoom. The unity, uh, living in unity, has said to each of us that it's important, Dorinda, get up. It's time to get up and get about your father's businesses morning because we must tell the people of God that it is important for us to live in unity. According to Psalms 133, unity brings anointing. Unity brings anointing. And I know some of us on this call don't want to talk about the anointing because we associate that with the Pentecostal faith. We, we associate the anointing with those people who do the shouting and, the, and, and, and who do the speaking in tongues. I understand that, but the anointing, but the uni unity brings on anointing and it brings on strength to the body of Christ and to those who are intentional about a, a real, a, a, and right relationship with all our uh, in the, uh, with all of our people, and not just black people, not just white people, or Jewish people, or rich people, or the needed. Uh, it's for everybody. First Church, if we are not living in unity with each other, in particularly with other believers, uh, we are not living. Uh, with a righteous God. So who are our, uh, who are the others that we talk about? Who are our brothers and sisters? Uh, Mark uh, tells us in Mark 3, 34 and 35, he provides an answer to this when we are going to live in unity. He says, look, these are my mother and brothers. Anyone who does God's will is my brother and sister and my mother. So uh, if we are going to live in unity, we have to look beyond ourselves. Uh, it is, it is uh, next to impossible for us to experience and receive the blessings of the Lord's strength and his anointing when relationships are out of sync with each other, when God is not your primary, your primary core purpose for living, I tell you, it's, it's impossible for us to have unity. Consequently, we need to learn how to get along with each other. Now, now, now getting along with each other and being in unity is not saying that we are doing everything just alike. Did I need to say that again? It doesn't mean that we are doing everything just alike. It means that your idea is just as important to God as my idea. It's, it means that you can lead us to a better place just like uh, somebody else can, our, our children on this call can lead us to a better place. But we have to be willing to receive what God has in store for us. I tell you, many of our leaders in our schools, in our communities, in our families, and even in the church, we talk a good game about living living in unity, yet we find all these entities are void and 
empty of genuine and transparent relationship with our uh, uh, fellow human beings inside and outside of the household of faith. Just consider uh, all the chaos and dishonesty among many in our society, regardless of what arena. And I have to say this this morning because every time you turn on the news, there's another uh, leader, whether it's in your in your academic setting or in your religious religious setting or in your political setting that has gone against God's will. And I tell you, it is time for all of us to take stock and to take a think about how am I living? How am I promoting unity among God's people? Or am I one of the ones that throw the stone and hide my hand? Or am I the one who talk negatively about somebody when we have the opportunity to stir up that gift and to raise that person or those individuals to a new level uh, living in unity? Uh, we hear we hear of individuals giving voice to violence in our communities, claiming they are interested in promoting a spirit of unity in our society, only to learn that they are in many instances the abusers. You heard me, right? I did say it. They are in many instances the abusers. Uh, my sisters and my brothers, if we are to live in unity, believers must become actively involved in speaking out against sexual abuse of our children in the education arena. Unity can only exist uh, uh, if we are united in the spirit, uh, in spirit and in truth. Uh, it, when we speak out against uh, those ills, um, uh, in the workplace or in the political arena. And even if you find that your pastor may be doing something that is causing disunity, you have a responsibility of letting me know what it is that I'm doing to break down the unity in the body of Christ. Amen. Uh, the Bible teaches us, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Thus, if we want to live in unity, we should begin by looking at our own lives. Some of those uh, closest to us uh, and, and those that we hold in high esteem are the most difficult uh, for us to help out when it comes to unity uh, and to help them get on track uh, to live in unity. As I read through the Bible, I see where the Lord prefers us to get along together. In other words, in other words, we must do all we can to get along with each other without a spirit of division and separation. Yes, I know people can be annoying. I understand that. Uh, sometimes I even annoy myself. Uh, in, and, and, and most times we find that even in the church, we find that people are annoying. In our families, we have have folks that are annoying. Uh, they just annoy us to, to no end, but yet God calls for us uh, to live in unity. I tell you, to live in unity is pleasing to God. It is pleasing to God. Uh, saints, let's remember the power to live uh, in unity and harmony can only be found in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't know where you are looking for it. I don't know who you are seeking out for unity. I hope it's not the president of the United States. I hope it's not your senator or your congressman. I hope it's not your mayor. I even hope that you are not just really focusing on your preacher, but you are focusing on the word of God. And uh, it said the Bible says, well, how can he preach or she preach unless they be sent? So I'm hoping that you are relying on your relationship with Christ Jesus. Now, finally, finally, our text gives us the following assurances uh, as it relates to living in unity. And I hope I have not gone too fast this morning, but I tell you after listening to uh, the songs that were uh, uh, that was played by Brother Perry and listening to the opening, the call to worship,
worship and the prayer and listening to the scripture being read by another witness, I tell you, it brought about a lot of things in my mind that I should or could say this morning. But somehow God wants us to make sure that we understand living in unity is the focus of this message this morning. It says how good and how pleasant it is for our um, brothers and sisters to live in unity. So our text gives us the following assurances. It says that unity brings strength. Unity brings uh, the anointing. Unity binds us in holiness as the bride of Christ. Unity is described as precious, wonderful, refreshing, pleasant, and good. Unity descends or runs down flowing from you to me and from me to, to, to you and from each of us. It runs down from God and we spread it out over the body of Christ. I tell you, unity like the, the precious oil is healing. And some of us on this call this morning, some of us we know in our family and our community needs healing. And we need to let them know that we love them, we care about them, and we are stirring up the gift in them. That's that oil that's being poured out upon each of us. Uh, unity is possible through the Lord God. Unity is only possible through our relationship with a true and a living God. Unity, let me tell you, church, pleases God. I don't know about you, but I want to please God. And uh, whatever I do, wherever I am, wherever I go, whatever I say, I want it to be pleasing to almighty God. If it's not pleasing to him, it's all for naught. It's like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. So as we go forth, uh, we know that unity is uh, living together in harmony among the God's humanity. Yes, even in your own family, unity is bound by peace and our completeness is bound in love. Friends, allow me to close this way. Uh, my goal this morning is to promote unity. It is my desire to live the life that I sing about in my song. I don't want to just talk the talk. I don't want to just put on a good face on a Sunday morning. I don't want you to look at me and think that I have it all together because truly God knows that I don't have it all together, but I'm a work in progress and every round goes higher and higher. I don't know about you, but as we come together every Sunday morning, whether it's Sunday school or worship, I feel God's presence as it uh, enters into my space. I hope you feel that same spirit that's entering into your space this morning. If you are sick and 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 you have brothers and sisters, uh, you have the elders. The Bible says if you are sick, you need to call on the elders. Why? Because there's a unity. Uh, when two or three gather together in his name, there he shall be also. I tell you, unity uh, builds up. It does not tear down. Unity builds up, it does not tear down. Unity stirs up and unifies, it does not stifle your gift. Unity says that you are important, that you are precious, that you are anointed, that you are a child of God. You are uh, uh, worthy to be uh, given a gift so that you might help others share and stir up the gift in someone else. Uh, unity is to encourage. I want to be able to encourage you in love, not discourage you with hurtful words and deeds. Living in unity. My friends, living in unity, it blends, it mixes, it brings together, it congeals, 
it's that salad that we put in the bowl and we stir it up so that every piece can be identified. But yet when you put that salad dressing on it, it tops it off. That's that anointing. So as we come together, we want to blend, we want to mend, but most of all, in unity, we want to be able to attend. Attend what? Attend God's people. Attend the sheep. Attend to the flock. Attend to the church. Attend to the word. Attend to each other. And we must attend to the least of these. Living in unity. I want to be able, there's an old song that says, I want to be used by God. And I want him to use me anywhere and anytime. I want to live so God can use me anywhere and anytime. If you're hesitant, to reach out this morning and to live in unity as Mr. Perry comes with our hymn of invitation. I ask that you will quietly search yourself because we are one. <laughs>